Hello everybody, welcome to today's Green Tech Media webinar titled How Cellular PV System Monitoring Can Improve Your Bottom Line. Uh, it's a topic that's brought to you with support from our sponsor, Aris Communications. Uh, for those of you that were on our previous webinar with Aris, we thank you for rejoining. Uh, apologize for technical difficulties last month, uh, but we're back and ready to roll. We've got some new data uh, for you guys and look forward to a lively Q&A. Uh, so a warm welcome to all. Uh, we have a great webinar for you uh, with speakers from both ARIS and their partner Solar Edge Technologies. Uh, as background, this webinar is part of a series of webinars that GTM does throughout the year uh, to help keep the industry informed on the latest renewable energy and grid modernization trends. My name is Scott Moskowitz. I'm a senior analyst for GTM Research, uh, the market analysis and consulting arm of Green Tech Media. Uh, check out the GTM icon at the bottom of the screen for more info about our company. Um, so, before we start, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, on the screen in front of you, you'll notice that there's a menu bar along the bottom uh, that has several widgets. Popping up now is uh, a little simulation of that screen so that you can see some of the annotations of what, it, of what these links do. Uh, download, the Download Slides widget has a link to download a PDF of this presentation. Uh, check out the Resource Center as well. Uh, and also, there's a widget that allows you to share this webinar through your preferred social media outlets, such as LinkedIn, Twitter, or Snapchat. Uh, on the right side of the menu bar, you can find uh, speaker bios, and most importantly, uh, we're going to try and leave about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the presentations uh, and the webinar for questions and answers. Uh, so please note that you're able to answer questions at any point throughout the presentation on the Q&A box on the lower left-hand side of your screen. Uh, we typically do not, we're, we're typically not able to get to every question, uh, but we see every question. So anything that we don't have time for live in the webinar, uh, we'll do our best to follow up directly by email. So please ask away. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and get started on today's topic. Uh, for those just joining us who might be mingling in now, uh, just a heads up, we'll be talking about how cellular PV system monitoring uh, can improve your bottom, bottom line in solar. Uh, we'll be discussing the different communications choices available to the industry uh, and to system owners um, and operators for residential and commercial PV systems. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Evan Whitelock from ARIS and Magnus Asbo from SolarEdge in just a bit. Uh, but first, I just want to set the stage real quick. Um, we're chatting about communications and monitoring for the residential and commercial solar market in the U.S. So that really starts with understanding the U.S. market as a whole. Uh, as you can see, the U.S. solar market is booming. Uh, after all the figures are totaled, uh, installations will have reached a record 14 gigawatts in 2016 uh, due to the huge amounts of projects built upon the previously expected federal investment tax credit step down uh, before receding a bit in 2017 and 2018. Uh, GTM Research and SIA's, uh, the Solar Energy Industry Association's Q4 Solar Market Insight Report was released just a few weeks back, uh, so these numbers are fresh. Uh, in Q3, 4.14 gigawatt of DC of solar was installed. Um, it's the largest quarter for solar installations ever in the United States, uh, and solar accounted for 60% of all new gener generating capacity in the quarter, uh, which was also a record. But uh, Q4 installations will likely have vastly exceeded that due to the large number of projects that we're trying to be to come online before the end of the year. Uh, so when it's all said and done, nearly 34 gigawatts of solar has now been installed in the U.S. Uh, that's at the end of Q3, um, and over 1.25 million systems are online. So it's worth noting in distributed solar that growth is slowing down. Uh, which was expected, uh, but perhaps unexpectedly, the slowdown is happening a little faster than anticipated, uh, especially in the residential market. Net metering is the main challenge, which has complicated a bit of solar's value proposition, uh, but market growth overall will continue. Um, and it's evidence of the slowdown is evidence really of a maturing market uh, that's growing in sophistication and which serves, and that growth serves as sort of a backdrop for developments in the system monitoring and system management space. So. The slowdown comes amidst, we'd, we'd be remiss not to mention how much, this, how much of this comes amidst record low PV system prices, uh, which have recently been driven down at even faster rates by crashing solar module prices. Uh, that helps spur demand for solar, uh, which now makes economic sense in more places and for more customers, but it makes profitability a challenge, uh, particularly for component vendors. Uh, overall, low prices mean, really just mean a greater focus on lifetime cost, and that's where monitoring comes into play. 
So before we dive any further, I want to mention one more fundamental shift in the market, uh, and that's the transition of customer demand from third party to directly owned PV systems. Uh, as, residential or as system costs fall both for residential and commercial systems, it makes sense to often to buy a system rather than lease it from, lease it from another owner. Uh, so we see changing ownership models here. Large fleet level and system owners, the solar cities and Vivens and Sunruns of the world, uh, of course have different installation and operating requirements than a homeowner who might buy their system outright or with, with a loan from a bank or with, or with money or with just cash. Um, and so the customer landscape is changing uh, and that has an, an effect especially on monitoring decisions. Overall, there is a lot of nuance to monitoring and there's a lot of different choices out there. Uh, so here to talk about that, um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Evan Whitelock from Aris uh, to speak about some of the things that customers should keep in mind. All yours, Evan. Great. Thank you very much, Scott. And this is Evan Whitelock from Aris. And before I dive in, looks like we're going to have a quick poll question for you guys. So if you could all just take a minute real quick to answer the question on the screen, give you about 10 to 15 seconds, and then we will go through the results very quickly. So go ahead and take a second to answer the question, please. Okay, so it looks like when we're looking at what kind of features do you need from your monitoring solution, uh, troubleshooting information is a big, uh, a key topic for most of you uh, that are attending, um, as well as power production, uh, certainly being the, uh, the information that you'd like to get from the system. So uh, obviously both very important things. Um, certainly things we'll be touching on as we go through this, so that is great to see. Okay. Uh, before we jump in, I did want to give a little bit of a background about Aris, uh, just for those of you on the line that are not who are not familiar uh, with what we do uh, and why we're we're here to talk about um, cellular and solar today. So, uh, Aris is a connectivity and platform provider for the IoT or Internet of Things space. Uh, we're primarily a cellular connectivity provider, but we also offer platforms for connectivity management, data management, and also IoT application enablement. Uh, we've been providing solutions in the IoT space, which is previously the M2M space, uh, since the early 90s, really, with solutions in the solar and alternative energy space for over 10 years. We're mostly an engineering company with more than half of our employees in our engineering teams really focused on product and solution innovation. And we're headquartered here in Santa Clara in the Silicon Valley, but we do have offices and support centers around the world, including Chicago, the UK, and India as well as a joint venture in Japan with SoftBank. To provide some additional cover, color, uh, we've got some, some quick numbers here that I'll walk through. Uh, today, we support over 8 million cellular units on our network. Um, to collectively, those devices are processing over a billion IoT messages per day. Now, that's anything from uh, actual data transactions, SMS messages, but also network registration information uh, and, uh, and activity information uh, that we capture from our devices uh, that provide meaningful information about device behavior to our customers. We've got an operational reach in over 100 countries today where we actually provide connectivity access across over 550 different operators around the world. Uh, and given our, the number of devices we have on the network, it actually puts us in the top 10 worldwide in terms of IoT units under management. So that was a little about Aris, but today we're here to talk about the different connectivity options you have for your PV monitoring solutions, and ultimately talk through why cellular is the best choice for you. Given what we just heard from Scott, the solar world is moving uh, to everything being metered and connected. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, a booming growth in the U.S. Cellular, cellular, solar market, but growth has been slowing recently, and prices are dropping, which means margins are going to be thin putting a greater emphasis on the lifetime costs of that connection, as Scott said. So uh, we're really going to be talking about how cellular can help with the lifetime costs uh, of your solution, um, which, uh, and there's, there's lots of factors we're going to be going through that may not be initially clear when you're, you're going through the different options. So as you move toward this connected future, uh, you've got some standard connectivity options uh, for your solution, the first being Wi-Fi. Now, this is commonly available in most residences and commercial settings, where Wi-Fi is really in place to provide consumer Internet access for computers and tablets and phones, connecting them to the Internet. Second, even when Wi-Fi modems aren't deployed, they're still likely going to be accessed to the Internet via wired Ethernet connection. 
either an installed internet access point or to a backhaul device um, that you can plug into that gives you access to the internet. And then the third option is solutions can use a cellular connection uh, to be able to send data out to the internet. And that's either by attaching a cellular modem, or that's done by attaching a cellular modem, either an embedded modem or an external modem to the PV inverter or monitoring solution. And when making your connectivity choice, what you're looking for, uh, you really want to consider three factors, three main factors. One, which solution gives you the fastest and simplest installation? Which solution has the highest reliability? And which solution delivers the lowest total cost? And while Wi-Fi networks are largely available in and around houses and buildings and residential areas, they introduce unnecessary installation costs and are subject to what I'll call external forces uh, that can and ultimately will interrupt service. For example, a homeowner changing internet providers. We're going to dive deeper uh, into that topic later on. Ethernet is, is typically a very, very reliable connection, but also comes with, uh, with difficult uh, installation processes that can be very, very time consuming. And while the initial reaction is to assume that cellular comes with a subscription fee and Wi-Fi and Ethernet are free, it's not actually the case. And there are a lot of factors to consider to accurately determine which option has the highest reliability and the lowest total cost of ownership in the long term. Because when you're considering your deployment, and you really need the, the one with the lowest total cost, because it's not a, a short-term uh, deployment that you're looking for. It's really a long-term. That, that solution is going to be need to be, it's going to need to be in place for a long time. So the lowest total cost, cost over the life of that connection is really what's important. And so remember that you want to be looking for the connectivity option that delivers the most value in those three key areas, which again are fastest installation, highest reliability, and lowest total cost. So as we go through the next slides, we'll go deeper into these concepts to see ultimately cellular uh, is that right option for you. And before we go any further, we're going to stop one more time for a quick poll again. This one, what is the biggest challenge that you have with your current monitoring solution? So go ahead and take a second to answer that. And uh, in about 10, 15 seconds, we'll jump back in and take a look at the results. Okay, so it looks like reliability is, uh, is the runaway option here, um, more so than cost. And um, looks like about a quarter you don't have a monitoring solution, which is good. You'll be able to learn some things today. Uh, but certainly reliability is a big factor to consider. Um, as we're going to talk about, the importance of the solution to be up at all times is, is really critical, uh, specifically for this industry. So I'm not surprised to see reliability there. And absolutely something we'll talk through uh, here shortly. So. Okay. Now, installation efforts and supply chain costs are obviously important to consider when evaluating the connectivity options. And in order to reduce installation costs and challenges, you need a solution that gives you instant global connectivity and management. Finding a single connectivity provider with a robust management platform will definitely reduce those installation complexities and reduce your supply chain. Uh, we'll get to that, but first it's going to start with the coverage footprint available. Obviously, network access is needed to be available for this solution to work in the first place. But clearly, cellular networks have a much larger footprint than Wi-Fi or Ethernet connections, and especially true for global deployments. Now, cellular provides the largest coverage footprint, and an important point here is that cellular does this with no additional infrastructure needed. Uh, both Wi-Fi and Ethernet, they do provide coverage limitations, and even at the installation site. Wi-Fi signals, uh, only, you know, they have limited range uh, and, you know, Ethernet cables are only so long. So to achieve the coverage you need with Wi-Fi and Ethernet, you may need additional, for example, Wi-Fi range extenders. So you may, you may need additional feet of cable, uh, especially if that Wi-Fi modem or Ethernet access point is, for example, on the other side of the house. And ultimately, you won't know until the installer gets there and is able to survey the site and make those decisions on the fly especially true on a global scale. Uh, this is absolutely a major challenge when you're trying to plan, uh, you know, in, in different countries, how these deployments and installations are going to go. You don't know what kind of existing infrastructure is going to be in place, but you can generally count on cellular to be available, especially in and around residential areas. So additional benefit with cell cellular is that that coverage can be checked prior to the installation. 
So again, these installers can spend less time surveying the site to see what Wi-Fi or Ethernet options are available, figuring out cabling and so forth. Uh, they can check ahead of time, make sure that device is going to have a signal that it can attach to. So certainly from a scalable coverage perspective, uh, cellular is the best option, and again, especially for those global deployments. And continuing to look at installations, uh, obviously we know that, that time is money with installations. The faster you can get in, install, and move on to the next installation appointment, the more money you are going to save and make. A major benefit of cellular is that it can eliminate the need for any connectivity activation processes during that installation significantly reducing the time required for each installation and moving those installers on to the next appointment faster. You know, with Wi-Fi, uh, you're definitely going to require access to um, certainly the resident or location's private network. Uh, this definitely means participation from that resident or property owner to get the appropriate passwords or credentials for that network. Um, and the installer will need to know how to pair a monitoring device to that Wi-Fi network. And this can be a challenge, uh, especially considering that those field installers are not necessarily going to be connectivity or network experts, nor should they be. They should be the experts on the product that they're installing. Um, similarly, Ethernet installations present challenges and complications as well, like finding those Ethernet access points, making sure they have enough cable, figuring out the best cabling path, running that cable, making sure the homeowner is pleased with the aesthetics of that cable and it's not sticking out and ugly and so forth. Uh, and these can cause serious delays, preventing that installer from moving on to that next appointment. Cellular, however, really requires no additional equipment, and devices can work out of the box, eliminating, eliminating that on-site activation process. The installer just needs to plug it in, turn it on, um, and they, the devices can even be pre-configured uh, and tested prior to that installation appointment. And because, you know, we're going to turn and take a look at, you know, supply chain optimization here, which is really going to improve the operational efficiencies of your installation process. And because really connected solar monitoring solutions are IoT deployments, um, when you're picking a connectivity provider for this, you should really be looking for an IoT-focused connectivity provider. Because in addition to just the cellular access that they'll be able to give you, these providers offer connectivity management platforms that can really automate your supply chain with this exact capability to be able to test devices ahead of time and then deploy them. Now, cellular IoT devices, as long as the connectivity management platform supports it, uh, can be activated before installation, tested live on cellular networks, and then automatically flipped to billable once they're installed and turned on. And so I'm going to have a use case for you guys here in a second of exactly how that works, the process of activating a device beforehand, testing it, and then the automatic flip to billing. Um, but before we do, we have one another poll question for you, which is, uh, what kind of communication do you use for your monitoring solution today? Is it cellular? Is it Wi-Fi or the Ethernet hardware or hardwire? Um, is it satellite? Or are you not using anything today? So please take a second to go ahead and answer this question, and then we will jump back on and uh, move forward in just a minute. Okay. Very good. So, um, all right, a mix of cellular, uh, Wi-Fi or hardwire, and, uh, and some of you not connecting today. Um, not surprised to see that, that no one's really using satellite. That's typically a, a pretty expensive connection. Um, but a good mix of cellular and, and Wi-Fi and, and hardwire, which is good. So um, as we continue to go through, we'll be talking about some of the benefits of, of cellular over Wi-Fi and hardwire. Um, and, uh, and glad to see there's a healthy mix of experience on, on all sides right now. So getting back to the, uh, the supply chain advantage um, of cellular and how it can really reduce um, uh, or simplify the activations for you, we're going to take a look at how you can uh, activate cellular devices before the installation, test them, and then send them out and, uh, and reduce costs along the way. So. Um, first, it, it starts with you as the, the solution owner, as the owner of that connection, uh, getting those the SIM cards or those cellular devices um, ahead of time, getting them into your system, making sure that the numbers are uh, 
you know, you can activate the device, get the numbers, associate it with the customer, uh, customer device so you can track it in your systems, know exactly where each device ends up. And you can also go ahead and activate that device. Now, provision here is synonymous with activation. So when we say provision the SIM for your customer, you're really activating that device for them. Um, what this does is it allows you to ship or give to the ship to the installer a live and connected SIM card. You can test it in your factory, make sure that the lights are blinking the way they're supposed to, make sure that the device is sending traffic the way it's supposed to, um, and all while uh, that device remains uh, in a non-billable state. Now, that part's going to be negotiated based on your specific provider and, and what they allow, um, but most IoT-focused connectivity providers provide some leeway there uh, around some, you know, some free data testing effectively before that device flips to a billable state. Now, when that device, that, that cellular connected device goes out the door, it's tested, you're comfortable that it works, it can go to, in this case, this, you know, the slides here says a customer, that could be the installer, um, is going to pull it out of the box and turn it on. And it's going to start connecting to the cellular network automatically, and it's going to start sending data um, once it's plugged in. Now, the way most platforms work, the way our platform works, is that when we see that device sending data, um, the, uh, well, it'll pass a usage threshold, threshold, for example, and then the MRC, the monthly recurring cost, will then automatically kick in. So again, no extra activation step needed to send it from the non-billable to the billable state. When the installer pulls it out of the box, tests it, or she doesn't need to test it, turns it on, and it starts sending data, the platform automatically recognizes that and then puts it into the billable state and it's now a, a deployed device operating the way it's intended to. Um, so again, automating the activation and installation process for the installers, eliminating any on-site activation um, of that cellular device, and then controlling your costs uh, along the way. Now, you know, through the, the rest of the course of that device, uh, it can be suspended, for example, if a device is not going to be used, uh, if it needs to be shut down, returned for, um, for any RMA, for example. Uh, if you're not using it, you don't want to pay for it. Cellular, pla cellular connectivity platforms allow you to turn that billing off while it's not being used. You can also manage the state of the device, cancel it, for example, if you're no longer going to need that device, or reprovision it if you want to take that canceled device and put it back out into the field. Now, as a reminder, these capabilities are really only available from IoT cellular providers. Uh, Wi-Fi and Ethernet deployments, they're going to need activation and configuration during the installation. On-site testing will be needed as well. Uh, and there's little work that can be done prior to that installer showing up to the installation site. But with cellular connectivity management platforms, they, they actually allow these, uh, these processes to be automated and, and save you money. Now, as we move toward considering the reliability of the connection choice, which, uh, as most of you said, was, was your primary concern, it's important to be reminded for the rest of you why reliability is so necessary. Uh, since we know that revenue-grade metering is essential uh, to the success of any solar monitoring solution, and connectivity, connection reliability is critical to the success of that metering, picking the connectivity choice with the highest reliability is, is really paramount. And while Ethernet cables, uh, they are a reliable connection so long as that network is, is there, um, and arguably the most reliable connection in a vacuum, cellular networks have the highest combination of coverage and uptime, uh, delivering ultimately the most value to your solution, uh, especially with, when combined with the advantages of that connectivity management platform, uh, especially around some of the troubleshooting tools that we're going to get to later on. Wi-Fi networks, on the other hand, can experience inconsistent service and the reliability of that service is really dependent on the owner of that Wi-Fi network, whether it's a homeowner or commercial provider. And those owners can make changes to those networks, meaning the connection is constantly subject to change and really out of your control, which is really the, the next topic, control over that connection, perhaps even more important to the overall reliability of your solution. Using outside Wi-Fi or Ethernet connections introduces what I'll call external risks that put the connection, uh, again, out of your control because they're dependent on those consumer Internet networks, uh, movable or reconfigurable Wi-Fi modems, and cables that could be removed, altered, or even cut. Cellular uh, is really the only choice that will give you end-to-end -end control of the entire solution and solution performance, ensuring higher uptime and lower costs. 
because that cellular subscription is owned and managed by you with no reliance on any outside networks. It's really a closed loop nature of this cellular solution, especially against the Wi-Fi or Ethernet solution. It ensures that over time that system will operate more reliably with less risk of interference by those external risks. To expand on that a little bit, what I mean by that is if you have a Wi-Fi deployment that has been paired with a homeowner's personal Wi-Fi network, for example, any change to that network will result in your solution going offline. If a homeowner changes internet providers to a new, maybe less expensive provider, your solution is going to go dark until an installer is sent out to reconfigure the device and connect to the new network. Even if a homeowner moves their modem uh, to another part of the house or even changes their own Wi-Fi password, uh, maybe their kids need a break from the Wi-Fi, so they change the Wi-Fi password, uh, your solution is going to go down until an installer can get out there and fix it. And in either case, you're probably not going to be able to rely on that homeowner to go reconfigure your solar monitoring solution to the new Wi-Fi credentials. Because if any of those Wi-Fi changes occur, uh, a truck roll is going to be needed. You're going to have to send somebody out to go reconfigure that connectivity, uh, costing not only hundreds of dollars for the work itself, but also ensuring that your solution is down uh, until that truck roll can be scheduled. Additionally, leveraging a consumer Wi-Fi network increases the likelihood that there will be bandwidth competition. Uh, what we mean by that is, especially in peak hours, if everyone's home streaming Netflix, there's going to be a lot of competition to use that one data pipe. And this could definitely cause connectivity issues for your solution. So ultimately, cellular places the connection ownership in your hands. Again, it's a closed loop, secure system. Uh, it's going to increase the connection reliability and reduce those truck rolls for you. And then last one here, but certainly not the least, is the security um, aspect. Uh, you know, it's an increasingly critical topic in the growing IoT world because uh, the devices can get hacked and data can get stolen. So you need a secure connection to protect your solution and your company, really. By nature, Wi-Fi networks are shared, right? multiple devices connecting to the same access point, uh, and it's far, more e far easier to penetrate um, than, you know, cellular networks which are government regulated and by design secure. Ethernet connections can also be tampered with, uh, especially where those back-end access points can be shared as well. But cellular networks are designed to be secure, and IoT-specific providers have designed their, their additional services around security. Um, specific capabilities like firewall VPNs, static IP addresses, non-dialable phone numbers, which means the device cannot be reached by any outside or third-party devices or, or phones, um, all of which ensure your connections and the data that they send uh, are protected. So all things that you should definitely be looking for um, when considering a cellular provider are the security aspects that they provide. And so now, we want to look at the final requirement when evaluating a connectivity options, uh, especially for solar monitoring solution, and that's the ability to manage and troubleshoot that connection, specifically with self-service tools that are going to help you solve that problem faster um, and really provide the ability to reduce the ongoing management costs of your connection. And these types of management tools that we're going to talk about are really only available from connectivity management platforms from really IoT-focused cellular providers. Uh, these platforms are not typically available uh, for any Wi-Fi connection or Ethernet connection. And a lack of visibility into a connection with no tools uh, to manage that connection can have several effects on the overall cost and performance of that connection. No visibility means you might not be aware if a connection is not working properly, um, either not sending data or sending way more data than it's supposed to, and that can result in extended downtime periods, truck rolls, uh, even a higher bill uh, than you're ready for. And in either case, the eventual result is additional money spent on that connection. Uh, Self-service connectivity management tools are needed for keeping those operational costs low. Kind of the three biggest reasons for connectivity management platforms result in, uh, in lower operational costs. And the first of those reasons is proactive monitoring. That these connectivity management platforms, again, uh, you know, really only available from uh, with cellular deployment, they provide tools like usage alerts and real-time billing reporting, uh, giving you that visibility needed to help prevent overage charges and identify inconsistent performance when it happens. For example, you can do usage-based alerts that can be set on a device, uh, really around the expected, you know, quote, normal usage profile. And say for your solution, that's five megabytes a month. Uh, if the device exceeds that normal amount, an alert will be triggered. 
notifying you the device is sending more data than it's supposed to, then you can start to work on that fix before you see at the end of the month an increased bill. Because if that happened on the 10th of the month and you don't see it till the end of the month, it can certainly be a material impact to your cost. On the other side, you can set minimum usage alerts on device as well. For example, if a device is supposed to send at least 100 kilobytes every day, that's its you know, minimum reporting levels. If you set a daily minimum usage alert, if that device ever sends less than 100 kilobytes, you can be notified and catch that issue before either the system stops working or a customer calls you with a complaint that something's not working right. And so since solution reliability is really crucial, uh, especially for revenue-grade assurance, proactive monitoring capabilities are what's probably most important to ensuring the ongoing performance reliability. You need to know immediately if there are any issues affecting that performance, um, and then be able to act on that accordingly. So one of the things that we covered earlier, um, you know, especially around declining margins in the PV solar space, uh, it, a lot of increased pressures to reduce costs. One of those is going to be operational costs. So ensuring that your operations are as efficient as possible is really key. And with cellular deployments and with those cellular management platform capabilities, it's going to allow you to keep those operational costs as low as possible. Now, these connectivity management platforms can come not only with self-service tools to identify issues faster, but also self-service troubleshooting tools uh, to help resolve those issues without having to wait for an, you know, assistance from another provider or somebody else, really speeding up your time to resolution. So one example here is that some platforms have the ability to clear registration on a device, which is effectively just going to kick it off the network and force it to retry and reestablish a network connection. It's really the same concept as uh, what you do when your own you know, uh, Wi-Fi modem goes out at home. You unplug the modem, count to three, and plug it back in. Um, just the act of reestablishing a data connection um, is a common and, and largely successful method of fixing connectivity issues, and that applies to cellular devices as well. So if we go back to that alert example um, on the minimum daily alert, again, if you set a minimum daily alert of 100 kilobytes, the device did not send 100 kilobytes in any given day, you get notified. And then you can use some of these tools and, and reporting capabilities to start investigating that issue. See in the usage reports that the device is not sending data. Uh, then you can go in and clear registration on that device straight from your computer um, or your own systems if you tie in that ability through APIs and force it to reestablish a connection all over the air. And then you can monitor those results in real time. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, this solves the issue, and, you know, with, with other connections, you'd have to send somebody out, you know, send out a truck roll, send out somebody, a technician, to go investigate that solution to discover that all you had to do was unplug it, wait three seconds, and plug it back in. Uh, these platform capabilities allow you to do that without having to go uh, spend the money to send somebody out there. Now, Finally, being able to identify and resolve those issues faster results in a better end user experience. Uh, not only can those issues be identified and fixed faster, again, saving you costs um, that, are, that are really unnecessary, but some of those issues can be identified and fixed before the user is even aware that anything's going on. And if there is an issue that ultimately will be customer impacting, you can notify that customer uh, before they notice any issues and inform them that you're already working on a resolution. Taking a proactive approach to customer service um, is certainly something that, uh, um, that customers find a, a great deal of value in. You'll have much happier customers if you're, if you're already working on it. So, you know, ultimately these management capabilities are, are clearly a very important part of the decision-making process when selecting a connectivity option for your solution because it can really have material impacts on your operational costs uh, and customer satisfaction. And these capabilities are only available through connectivity management platforms provided by, uh, by IoT-focused cellular providers and really only available on with cellular um, deployments. So as you go through your selection process to pick a cellular connectivity provider, make sure you're asking the right questions around um, management capabilities, tools, um, self-service tools, and uh, um, so that you know that you're going to have the right capabilities without having to go open a support ticket and wait for someone to respond, that you can start um, solving those issues right away. So, you know, kind of to wrap it all up, 
And we know that there are three key factors to keep in mind when picking the right connectivity choice um, for your monitoring solution. And those are really what option gives you the fastest and simplest installation, what has the highest reliability, and then ultimately what's going to give you the lowest cost. Um, and hopefully we've seen that cellular is really the best option that meets all of those criteria. Because the, the instant global connectivity and management that cellular connections offer give you the most coverage everywhere and can automate your supply chain. Devices will connect out of the box, can be tested prior to the installation, and really giving you the quickest and most efficient installations, moving from appointment to appointment as fast as possible. Additionally, cellular connections are more reliable and secure and give you more control over your connection uh, to support the advanced revenue grade metering requirements, really ensuring that your solution is up at all times and is safe from those external risks that we had talked about. And then finally, cellular connections are the only option uh, that comes with connectivity management platform capabilities and those self-service management tools, right? meaning that you have the tools to identify those issues faster, faster and fix those issues faster, resulting in increased operational efficiency, lower operational costs, and improved customer experience. And so um, here in a second, we're going to turn it over to Magnus from SolarEdge. Um, to go through an example of, of some of these capabilities in action. But before we do, we've got one more poll question for you. So um, the poll question is, for those of you that have solutions out there today using cellular, um, how many connections do you have out there? Um, and so if you could all take a second to answer this real quick, and then we'll take a look at the, uh, the results and then hand it off to Magnus. I think I skipped ahead one. Oh, here we go. Excellent. Here we go. Perfect. So, um, okay, a good chunk of you um, have yet to deploy any cellular connection so far, but uh, a couple of you, more than a thousand, um, and then even a decent chunk getting up into the one to ten thousand and more than ten thousand. So, so a good range. Um, one of the nice things about managing cellular connections is these platforms are built to scale to support hundreds of thousands of devices. So whether you have one or whether you have 100,000 or whether you have a million devices, um, the tools are in place, the scalability is in place to be able to support that. So um, there's really no size limit on, on what cellular platforms can do for you. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's great to see that there's a mix there. Um, great. Well, thank you for responding to that. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Magnus from SolarEdge. Yeah, thanks very much. I uh, uh, wanted to say we've enjoyed working with Harris and are seeing great success with uh, cellular monitoring for our inverters. And uh, I'd like to describe some of the advantages that we as a uh, inverter manufacturer are seeing both for ourselves and for our customers. Before going into that, um, though I'd like to set the stage by saying a few things about SolarEdge. SolarEdge pioneered optimized inverter technology globally and has been in business since 2006. Currently, we're the number one supplier of residential solar inverters in North America, and we're growing rapidly in the commercial TV space. And we are publicly traded on the NASDAQ and have consistently been profitable. Over the last few years, we've seen a marked move in the North American market towards module-level power electronics, and especially to our product. There are a couple of reasons for that, uh, one of which is uh, increased uh, energy harvest, um, but especially we're starting to see the requirements to, uh, for compliance to new NEC safety rules uh, and the enhanced safety capabilities that you get with module level power electronics has been uh, brought to the fore. In addition to that, though, we're seeing a huge advantage for more accurate monitoring uh, and uh, uh, the advantages that come with being able to actually see what is happening at the module level rather than uh, uh, simply seeing an aggregated system capability. So these advantages really come from our architecture, which is based on separating the DC to AC conversion part of a uh, solar inverter from power optimization of the PV modules. Our architecture essentially places the power optimization at each module where it's most effective and then placing the DC to AC conversion at a single inverter where it's most economical. With the separation, we can increase harvest by tuning optimizers to each module's unique characteristics and simplify the inverter, making it smaller, more reliable, and cost-effective. 
In addition to the harvest and reliability benefits, the opportunity to monitor the system at the module level is a tremendous plus. By understanding each module's performance, the service person can know if anything is wrong with the system and if it is exactly which module is being affected. In fact, just by looking at the characteristics of that module through the monitoring system, they can tell the difference between a failed bypass diode versus a simple case of debris having landed on the module. We provide this monitoring for free for 25 years and include mobile applications that provide insight on the go. In order to get that benefit, though, we rely on continuous communication between our cloud services and the inverter. I should stress that SolarOdge provides a variety of connection methods, including wired Ethernet, Ethernet backhaul over wireless Zigbee, cellular, and RS-485. Recently, though, we've seen a tremendous increase in the uptake of cellular, over back, cellular as a backhaul for a variety of reasons, and we really do expect this, uh, in, this interest to increase over time. What we found is that the ability of the installer to connect the inverter to the cloud without having to unravel the homeowner's internet connection is a huge boon. Not only is it faster and more foolproof, but it also provides assurance that the homeowner won't inadvertently disconnect the inverter by changing their router password or replacing their equipment. We happen to provide revenue grade metering built into our inverter, and so this assurance that there's going to be continuous connectivity is particularly crucial when the system is providing production inf information, for instance, for SREX and for power purchase agreements, where there are real financial consequences to not having uh, information provided on the system production. Installing the cellular modem is simple. We just open the inverter up, mount the modem in its slot, attach the antenna, and power up the inverter. Once it's powered on, the inverter automatically begins reporting back to the monitoring system. We sell uh, the modems with a prepaid cellular service plan, and it's available with both a five-year or a 12-year uh, service. And there's really nothing about the cellular connection to configure. It's all set up for the installer, and there's no back-end management for them, for them to worry about. So this combination of simplicity, reliability, and performance is driving more and more installers to use our cellular solution. And with that, I'll hand it back to Scott for our next section. Thank you. Thank you, Magnus. Thank you, Evan. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and mention to the audience one more time we've had a few questions come in. Um, we'll start going through them uh, right away. But if you, uh, we still have about 15 minutes or so, so feel free to uh, continue asking questions um, and we'll what we'll have time to get to. Um, so to, to start, Evan, I'll start with you, uh, and just some housekeeping. Uh, where does Aris get involved, and how does it work for the customer? So is the inverter manufacturer typically providing a monitoring platform paid for by the system owner, and then the inverter manufacturer has the contract with Aris? I guess, does it vary from customer to customer? Um, I guess the, big, the main question is, what role does Aris play? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Great question. So um, to a certain extent, it does kind of vary customer to customer. Um, we've seen examples where, um, you know, inverter manufacturers have kind of developed a solution, and, and they are actually the ones that are um, responsible for the, the, the cellular connectivity and providing that. Um, in other cases, it, it's down the road, whether it's installers or, um, or, or platform providers, like you said. So uh, really what it comes down to is, is uh, who is going to be owning that cellular connection and managing that for the entire de deployment um, and, uh, and kind of you know, selling that service to um, you know, down the chain. So uh, anybody that, um, that is ultimately going to be owning that cellular subscription, um, that's typically who our customer is. Um, and... Uh, um, but we do have some additional capabilities that, that could extend, you know, down the stream, for example. But but primarily, it's it's whoever's owning that cellular subscription. Got it. Yeah. So Magnus, um, I don't want to ask you guys to disclose anything. I, what I'm curious about is, from your perspective, I want to get a sense of what customers ask for. You know, does the customer usually specify the type of communications protocols or type that they're looking for that they need, or is it sort of your place? as the inverter provider to recommend that to them. I'm curious, like, you know, how does it go on the customer end and where do you, like, what do you recommend? What do you usually recommend? Well, as I said, we do provide a variety of different um, uh, communications methods. So in a sense, when we are speaking with our, our customer, we're trying very hard to be uh, um, as, uh, as level about it as we possibly can be. It is, it is absolutely their choice which, uh, which method they, uh, they go with. Uh, what we're finding is that people who are trying to 
gain greater efficiency in their installations are preferring uh, methods like cellular. Um, however, there are some others who are, uh, um, you know, they're, they're used to the ways that they've been doing things and they are, are going to continue uh, uh, running an Ethernet line out to, the, uh, out to the inverter. If that's their preference, then, uh, then, then we're going to remain agnostic. However, what we do hear is that there are a lot of advantages to, uh, to the installer for, the, uh, for connecting with cellular um, that, uh, that's causing them to take it up more quickly. But, it's, but uh, honestly, it's not so much uh, based on a, a push on our part as a, uh, as a pull for the technology. Right. And as you mentioned, you, you, communications is the monitoring is included for your customers. You don't price it in. You price it in rather than sell it separately, correct? That's exactly right. And the, the method that we have, as I said, we have uh, um, we provide monitoring for 25 years. Uh, the connectivity for cellular um, is a uh, a different thing. So we simply take uh, five or 12 years of um, of cellular charges, uh, and we lump that together with the modem and provide that as as one thing. So uh, you know, one thing that people don't like to get is uh, is monthly bills. So uh, we we take care of that for people. Got it. That makes sense. And one more question before I jump back to you, Evan, and go into a few from the audience. Um, you know, what percentage, Magnus, would you say use either, and Evan, you might have a comment here too, but what percentage of solar installers uh, or just system owners are using cellular versus Wi-Fi versus Zigbee or any other type? Are, I'm, I'm curious, like, what the breakdown in the market looks like and then if folks are converting from one to another and whether there is any noticeable trend that you see in the market. Um, speaking for myself, what we've seen is a marked increase uh, during the last uh, 12 months in particular uh, in uptake of, uh, of cellular. Um, mm -hmm. And what we're seeing especially is uh, um, in cases where people had been using um, a wireless method to get into the household, so they were, they were trying not to uh, drill, uh, drill and run wires in the first place, uh, what we're seeing is a movement from those uh, wireless methods uh, uh, towards, uh, towards cellular. Um, so that seems to be uh, where most of the motion is. Got it. Um, great. So, Evan, one thing I've heard is that uh, GSM 2G cellular service is going to end. Um, so I'm curious if what's, what's sort of the timeline and what happens there. And then I guess the question is how do customers evolve or react to changing cellular services? Sure. Yeah, great, great question, and it's certainly one of the um, – the hotter topics in the cellular world is, is kind of the, um, you know, the, the launch and uptick in 4G and then so what happens to some of these older technologies. A lot of this was driven by uh, AT&T did shut down their 2G network uh, in the United States at the end of 2016. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, looking at 2G um, in the U.S. on the GSM side, it's, it's certainly um, nearing the end of its life. The last remaining major provider is T-Mobile. Um, we think, and, and again, they haven't said anything specifically and until they announce anything um, we don't have any official timelines but um, you know probably through the end of the decade um, is a is a decent estimation um, 3g uh, as well uh, probably has a fairly similar time frame through the end of the next decade you know into 2020 but but probably not too many years beyond that um, since the the carriers are moving towards 4g um, now, fortunately for 4G, um, there really isn't much of a, of a concern, especially looking out over the next 10, 15 years, um, that that's going to go away anytime soon. There's some noise about 5G development, but those standards won't even be finalized for the next, you know, three or four years, um, let alone any, any movement towards an actual deployed network. Um, and a lot of that's going to be, um, you know, 5G is, is really more of a, a piggyback onto 4G and an expansion versus a, a technology replacement like it has been in the past. Um, probably something maybe maybe for the next webinar, but because uh, it's it's a loaded topic. But um, uh, you know, to sum it up, with with 2G, uh, you know, probably um, you know three or so more years left. 3G probably actually not too different from that timeline, and then 4G for the foreseeable future. Um, as far as is you know what recommendations do we give to customers? Um, is you know certainly if you're in a place where um, you have some existing devices that are 2G or 3G. Um, it's never too early to start planning your, uh, you know, ultimately uh, a lot of it's going to be a, a hardware replacement is, is kind of the unfortunate nature of, of technology transitions. Um, and so uh, the, the sooner that you develop a plan and, and start working towards that, the easier it's going to make your life uh, in the future. So 
Um, we've worked with lots of customers on that before. Um, I know that we'll have a, a contact uh, person up here at the end. So if you have any questions about uh, your specific situation, we'd be happy to walk through that with you. Go ahead and push that slide uh, for you guys up to the front. Um, that can sit up there uh, for the next 10 minutes. We still have a ton of questions going in, so I'm going to dive right into another one. Um, uh, here's a question. So network security, and I'm just reading this word for word. So network security has been a limiting factor for Wi-Fi or Ethernet, uh, additionally for government, but now for everybody in addition to reliability and cost. This informs what alternatives are feasible. So I guess the question is, I'll rephrase Magnus sort of to, Magnus, first for you, you know, what are some of the security concerns of your customers, and then Evan, you can kind of jump on here just to uh, speak a little more specifically to this question in terms of what are, if there are any limiting factors of security, and you know, what are some of the things. So, Magnus, first to you, you know, what sure. are some of the security concerns question of your customers? Well, we have a variety of concerns that uh, that our customers bring up, and and those who are prescient about it uh, have been speaking about them for some time. But certainly, we had uh, a couple of notable events back in the uh, in the fall where uh, you know some devices that were on the Internet of Things uh, started to create some havoc, uh, and with that, we're starting to hear uh, more concern from folks. Um, I have one customer that I'm thinking about right now that has. Uh, a lot of, uh, of um, uh, personal data on their servers, uh, and they're, uh, they're concerned about putting um, additional devices on their network. Uh, and this is a perfect case where uh, um, cellular actually circumvents uh, the whole conversation. I can provide a very detailed engineering uh, view of why um, the inverter is safe on their network, but it's actually much easier and much uh, quicker to uh, get peace of mind from the customer to simply say, we are not on your network. We are on a cellular network uh, that is not part of your, uh, um, uh, your IT infrastructure. With regard to breaking into uh, the, uh, the data stream, and people have been concerned about uh, whether or not you can break into the, uh, the data stream and control the, uh, the inverter, turn it on and off, and so forth. And the good news there is that uh, um, cellular networks are, are inherently encrypted. Uh, so there is uh, there's actually greater security by uh, by using the cellular system. Got it, Evan. Anything to add there? Uh, so you know, first, great great answer, Magnus. And uh, um, you know, it, it's absolutely true with with cellular networks networks by design. Um, they are they are designed to be secure. Uh, a lot of it has to do with you know the government regulation around those networks. Um, and, and one thing to keep in mind is, is, is kind of like a proof point is uh, when you look at some of the initial drivers of, you know, M2M and IoT solutions, um, a lot of them are, for example, consumer auto, connected cars. Uh, major manufacturers rely on, uh, you know, these OnStar type solutions to dial 911 in the case of an emergency crash, for example. Um, needless to say, there's a lot of security certifications that go along with that type of solution. And, uh, and then also one of the... Um, one of the industries that is seeing a lot of traction is the home healthcare market. Uh, obviously, the patient data needs to be very secure. There's a lot of government regulations around that. Um, the common selection for both of those is cellular, and security is, is a big reason why. Got it. Great. Um, we will keep rolling through these. Uh, Magnus, uh, there's a bunch of questions rolling through about um, SolarEdge's experience with, with just cellular options out there. I, th there's a few questions that I'm going to combine. One, how much, like, how much data is being used per month uh, by solar, like for a typical system? You know, what type of, how much information, are we, how much data are we talking about? Are you guys were you on a 2G or a 3G network? Um, maybe we can just speak through some of these quick nitty-gritty questions like that. Oh, sure. Um, well, let's start with the last one. I mean, currently we are on a, uh, a 3G network. Uh, when uh, the economics uh, make sense, we will move to a 4G network. Um, as, uh, uh, as was mentioned, we know that there's going to be uh, transitions in the network, so anybody who has a, uh, a 3G modem will, uh, will receive a 4G modem from us at the right time. Um, so, you know, we are trying to take care of that, uh, that risk for our customers and, and, uh, and deal with it that way. But uh, currently we're on 3G and then we'll move to 4G and ultimately there will be a 5G and we'll, uh, uh, we'll do that as well. Um, essentially, we're, uh, we're as technology agnostic as we can be while being very smart about what we deploy. Uh, and we have both a, a CDMA product uh, and we also uh, provide a GSM product. Um, and uh, what was the other portion of the question that was out there? The question was how much data per month are you using? What type of 
okay, yeah. requirements are we talking about? And, uh, Yes, the amount of data that uh, that we use per month depends a little bit on the uh, the system type and the system size. Um, we uh, have been providing a uh, residential plan that's uh, you know in the region of uh, of uh, uh, you know about five megabytes a month. Um, and uh, as we go to uh, larger commercial system sizes, we'll uh, we'll go up in uh, data consumption. Uh, so those uh, those systems will uh, that will go up into uh, you know for multi megawatt systems into hundreds of megabytes a month. Got it. And then one more question, Magnus, for you guys is just is are the so Solar Edge is always providing or always has the option of providing communications. Is that standard amongst inverter manufacturers, or do you guys do it differently from? Um, I think that we do a better job of integrating compared with others. It's uh, it's relatively uh, unusual to have a built-in cellular uh, capability. I can think of, uh, of one or two others that do that, um, but uh, but generally uh, inverters uh, are set up in one way or another to uh, to communicate. Uh, whether they do it well or not is uh, is somewhat dependent on the manufacturer. Got it. Great, Evan. Uh, I'll throw it back to you. Um, what about LPWA? Uh, can that be used for monitoring? Maybe you could speak to a little bit about what that is and what it means, and if that's if that's something that's an option for folks. Sure. Yeah. So, so great question, and it, it probably deserves a, a bit more attention than the the three minutes we have remaining. But I'll I'll do my best to give a, a quick highlight. So, um, uh, there are a couple of different types of of uh, you know low power low power wide area network solutions that are coming out. Um, ultimately, one of the challenges with all of them is that they will they will need um, uh, the, the coverage footprints are small today. Um, they are not leveraging, for the most part, existing cellular infrastructure and so forth. And their private uh, deployments uh, requiring additional access points deployed in, in the areas where coverage will be available. Uh, ultimately, the challenge in the short term is going to be um, is going to be the, the coverage that is available. Now, certainly in areas where where that is an option, it's uh, it's certainly an interesting um, connectivity option. Uh, you know, especially given some of the benefits around um, the low-cost hardware with, with some of those. Um, but especially from a, a large scale and, and, and certainly global perspective, um, the supporting infrastructure is not widely available today. So certainly something that, that we'll keep an eye on or that you'll want to keep an eye on uh, moving forward. Um, but, uh, but from a, you know, a, a scalability standpoint, um, you know, cellular definitely has an advantage there in terms of, of where coverage is available. Great, and then last question for you, Evan, before we wrap things up. Um, are, is, you mentioned having offices all over the place, but there's a question of what carriers have uh, Internet of Things 4G LTE in Canada, a uh, company looking to break into the Canadian market. Uh, competitors have had to pull out due to old CDMA technologies being sunset. Uh, any, any thoughts on the Canadian market, or is it something that just... Mm -hmm. um, how would you address that question? Sure. So, so looking at Canada, and, and it's it's a good point too, because um, especially around technology and new technologies and 4G deployments, for example, um, a lot of it is going to be carrier and, and country specific. Um, now, Canada fortunately has a, a a pretty well deployed 4G network across most of the major carriers uh, in Canada, whether that's Rogers or Bell or um, or Telus and so forth. So. There are definitely 4G options in Canada, um, uh, and uh, um, you know, if, if whoever asked that question, if you'd like to find out more, um, you know, please feel free to reach out. I know that we'd be happy to talk through which options that, that we support today, and then what your other options might be for uh, for 4G in Canada. Sounds great. And folks, just so you know, there's the I guess you guys can see up on the screen now is uh, contact for a few of the folks from Aris. Um, Feel free to send messages to Evan, myself, and Magnus as well. I'm not sure if I think it might be up there somewhere, but if not, we'll get back through from the questions. So feel free to throw contact information in there. Uh, and with that, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, first, uh, thank you to everyone for attending. Thank you to Eris for providing the opportunity here. Um, and don't forget, we'll be archiving this in our webinar section on greentechmedia.com, uh, and you can view it for the next couple of months as well as register for more webinars there as well. And with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day, uh, rest of the morning, rest of the evening, wherever you be, and next time, thanks.